From this point, I'm going to play 10 generations at a time and look at the median creature after each 10 generations. Here we go! Oops, I paused on 31 instead of 30. Oh well. S57, aka the Mega Creature, has taken over both the median spot and the best creature spot, though it doesn't take the plurality. S56, the original champion, has gone under the radar, and bigger species, such as S69, are starting to rise. The median has passed 3 meters, but the best creature has passed 6. Who is this creature? Let's see what it does. Meh, still not spectacular. Onward! Oh my gosh, a huge breakthrough. I'll get back to it in a bit. The mega creature has grown to half the size of the folded paper using the spastic technique. Oh my gosh, another huge breakthrough. And it's in the double digits! I'll also get back to that in a bit. S45 now covers over 50% of the population, a majority, and we say hello to a new species, S46. We don't know what they look like yet, but if they keep growing, we'll find out. Wow, in just 10 short generations, S46 went from being a tiny fringe species to the plurality, taking it away from the long-reigning S45. I still don't know what they look like though, because they haven't shown up in the best or median creatures yet, but I'm sure they'll pop up. Well, it happened. In Generation 62, S46 now holds the top spot at 11.9 meters. What's so revolutionary about this species that allowed it to take over the population? Looking at the preview, this new species looks almost exactly the same as the previous S45, except with this really thin new muscle. How could that help? Well, we might see the effects of this advantage more as evolution progresses. Everyone forgot the Tringle still existed, but it's been holding on with a steady 6% this whole time. You can see that it's the median creature for Generation 70, so it's still in the game. The successful S46 species is slowly but surely refining itself, bringing the median distance to almost 10. I guess we'll call it the tetrahedron because that's what its structure resembles. For a brief moment, an S45 creature takes the lead again. At this point, the tetrahedron has gotten really fast. Wait, never mind, there's still a lot of work to be done. And here we are, 100 generations and nearly 12 meters later. The median creature is chugging along slow and steady, I mean fast and steady. Let's look at those last 100 generations in just 4 seconds. Alright, now what happened at those breakthrough points, like at generation 34? Before the breakthrough, we've got a mega creature. Its dark node in the back is what it pushes off of to move forward, but notice how the node spends a long time in the air. It's wasting opportunities to go forward. The breakthrough occurred when one of the mega creature's offspring received a lucky mutation by chance that placed this frictiony node lower to start with. This allowed the creature to hit the ground with its nodes running, giving it a 2.3 meter advantage over its parent. The next breakthrough started where the last one left off. Notice how the back node isn't quite black, it's a very dark red. That means it doesn't have maximum friction, so it might slide just a bit. A random mutation in Generation 44 fixed that. Now the back node is black, giving the creature the most grip possible when pushing off the ground. That small adjustment gave the creature 3 more meters of distance. Remember, all these mutations arose from random chance. Many, many more creatures received neutral or bad mutations, but these genes didn't get passed down as much as the good ones. 
the good mutations were merely lucky shots in the dark, but they're not so surprising when you consider the fact that the population has already made thousands and thousands of these shots. 